this was a life in film. All right. I didn't have a film school education. I didn't have any money. In order to not fall back, I needed to just focus in on what it was that I wanted for my life and my art form. And the closest thing that I knew about what I wanted to do was I remember thinking, I want to make movies that people will watch them and that will make them want to make movies. <laughs> settle in on what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm contemplating a lot of different things. Oh, there's that book that I've always wanted to turn into a movie. Maybe I'd start reading that again and go over my old notes. I, I explore some different ideas, of, you know, see what stage in the incubator <laughs> that they are at, at any given time, especially when I'm looking for inspiration. It's almost a, a metaphor for falling in love. You date a lot of people and you flirt with a lot of people and everything's going great, but then you meet the right one. Once I realize that, oh, okay, this has grabbed me, and now I'm, maybe I'm thinking about me music choices for it and web spinning about it and maybe it gets me to actually start writing a little bit and pretty shortly into that process I'll probably end up writing something that's like okay I'm doing this now. After Jackie Brown I put Kill Bill off to the side and I started writing Glorious Bastards and that became this never-ending process because people thought I was going through writer's block. I was going through the opposite. I couldn't stop writing. Right. I'd have a hundred page script and no end in sight. We're going to be doing one thing, and one thing only, killing Nazis. When I'm writing, it's about the page. It's not about the movie. It's not about cinema or anything. It's about the literature of me putting my pen to paper and, and writing a good page and making it work completely as a uh, document on itself. That's my first artistic contribution. And if I do my job right, by the end of the script, I should be having the thought, you know, if I were to just publish this now and not make it, I'm done. I've done it. I could actually be okay with just saying that that's it. And then that, that can stand and whoever wants to read it will read it and that's and I'm done. Now it's mine to F up if I go forward with it. Now I always go forward with it, but I actually think you sh I, for where I'm coming from, I want to love that script so much that I, I'm tempted to stop. I'm tempted to call myself a winner right then and there. You know, Lieutenant, you can be pretty good at that. You know how you get to Carnegie Hall, don't you? Practice. I've never understood the concept of a, um, a screenplay just being a blueprint for the movie. I do write them like novels. I mean, I, they're not, it's not crazy prose, uh, you know, that goes on forever, but there is a commitment to the prose. And um, there is a literary narrator talking to the audience who is reading it. And these scripts are meant to be read. I mean, to such a degree, in the case of something like Inglorious Bastards or Django and even Kill Bill, basically, I've written a movie that really can't be done. Uh, it's not, it's so not a blueprint. It is so a novel that I am stuck on set every day adapting my novel into a movie every day. F a duck. For a long time, I tried to think out everything in the story, even though I know things would completely change as I, as I go on. However, now I've realized that it doesn't do me much good to think too much past the middle. I mean, I might know where I want to go. I mean, it, I write genre pieces, so you have an idea what the third act's going to be. Yeah. You know, a genre movie, you think you know where you're going, and you're probably right, and you have an idea of how you might want the ending to end as far as, you know, for both a movie and for an audience. But for the most part, you can kind of work out more or less what's going to get you to the middle. To think beyond that is kind of silly because by the time you get to the middle when you've actually been writing it, it's a different story now. It's a different thing now. Now you are the characters. You know the characters. Things that you could never have known before you started yeah. writing are now, they're in your blood. It's like this entire, you know, there is a mythology to my movies to some degree or another. And that mythology is delivered as as I write. But by the time you get to the middle, that's where you want to be. You want to have the, be this expert. You want to be in the middle of the story. You want to know who these people are. And now, with all this knowledge, now you figure out where you want to go for the second half. But really, it's the characters who really write the piece, you know? And so the whole thing is about just letting those characters come alive, and they take me, and then they tell me, and then they, you know, they go their own way. 
and and I'm following them and almost the coolest stuff that comes out that looks like it's the most planned to be a zinger later because it's been set up here usually just happens organically. The Führer is attending the premiere. Character A says this, then character B says that, and character C says that, and all of a sudden, and character C just told you something you didn't know. And now you have to work from that, of either the characters in the scene have to work from that new information, but now you're also having to work from that new information. Now, I can tend to go long when I do that. So I have to be really aware of like, okay, is this holding up? Can this be? This long? Yeah. Now, about this pickle we find ourselves in. There's no example to the extent that the basement scene in Inglorious Bastards is deep in the movie. Yes. I mean, deep in the fucking movie. And there's no Aldo, there's no Shoshana, there's nobody you know. A bunch of motherfuckers you just met. Right. <laughs> and now all of a sudden they're in a 40 minute scene. That's supposed to be suspenseful. I, it was never my intention for that to be that long. I just started writing it and it kept holding. It kept holding, they kept talking. I kept keeping the reality of the situation that they could be exposed at any moment. I'd almost exposed them that it seemed like they got away with it, then something else would happen. And then I'd go over it again and like, I, I like it. I, I think it holds, you know? And dare I say, I think it makes it more suspenseful. I think the longer I can stretch this rubber band out and actually feel that there's more rubber there to give, the more suspenseful it, it, it will be. I didn't know how long it was going to go. And it was just one of those things where I just kept playing it beat for beat and it, it kept working. You know, and I, I was aware that, Jesus, this is turning into a one act play, but it's a good one act play. <laughs> There was little tricks that they would find that uh, uh, would give people away, whether they were posing as Nazis posing as Americans or Brits, or uh, Brits posing as Germans. One was like if they held their fork in the wrong hand, or if they held their knife, or they cut their meat in a different way. There was all kinds of things like that. But Enzo G. Castorelli actually told me as I was just having a lunch with him, he was visiting as I was writing, and he told me one of the big things is that, you know, the Germans do three like this, and that, you know, people in, in bars, you know, say, Three beers, boom, they knew it. That's the way they do it. As a matter of fact, it was funny because actually one of the um, people on the crew, this German, was actually married to an American. She read the, th the script and didn't get it, all right? And she goes to her American husband, she goes, do three with your fingers. He goes like this, she goes, fuck. <laughs> he goes, how do you do three? She goes like this, he goes, oh, that's weird. <laughs> if you want to win the war tonight, we have to make a deal. One of the big things where, when I t say the characters write it, I don't really know what they're going to do, and I don't really know, like, you know, I don't know who's going to die and who's going to live. You know, at one point, I, I didn't know Aldo was going to make it all the way to the end. I actually thought Aldo might die, like, somewhere towards the end of Chapter 4. All right, I even thought about it, even figured out kind of how to do it. But he didn't. And the characters I didn't know were going to die, died. Actually, when we're all tickled to hear you say that. Quite frankly, watching Donnie beat Nazis to death is close we ever get to going to the movies. Donnie! Genre actually keeps me disciplined. As terrific as I think my characters are, and as much as I want to explore them and go with them, it has to work inside of the genre that I'm doing. If I'm doing a Western, if I'm doing a World War II movie, if I'm doing a martial art movie, I don't want it to be an art film meditation on that. I want it to actually deliver the goods. If you like martial art films, I want you to watch Kill Bill and see a really terrific martial art film. Now, frankly, I want it to be more than that, but as far as delivering the goods for the given genre, that, that has to happen. It's, it's the starting off point, and it has to be the ending point. But inside of the beginning and the ending, you know, I want to transcend the genre. You know, I started off as a bunch of guys on a mission movie. I want Inglorious Bastards to ultimately mean more than The Devil's Brigade. Having said that, I want it to be as fun as The Devil's Brigade is. Each and every man under my command owes me 100 Nazi scalps. And I want my scalps. Well, that's where you can really have fun with the whole chapter concept. 
you know, of a chapter structure. Because just the way they do in novels is, okay, now we're through with the Elvis character in chapter one. Now we're taking on the Quentin character in chapter two. And then it's all about them. And then eventually the characters start intertwining as the chapters go on. But that's part of the fun of a chapter structure. You get to kind of start all over again and tell your story from beginning to end from a different area, a different dramatic idea. But now what made this different this is a time where I actually kind of had to play by the rules when it came to the last chapter, how the movie would end. If you look at all my other movies, I guess with the exception of uh, Kill Bill Volume 1, I've always undercut the climax. Hopefully I didn't undercut your enjoyment. I gave you a lot of fun and you enjoyed it, but it was not the big climax you were expecting. Well, this was the one time, the one genre that, okay, if you're going to do the Guns of the Navarone, if you don't blow up the guns or, or come up with a real reason why you're not blowing up the guns, then you're kind of effing in the wrong way with the genre. What brought you to it in the first place? So, so the thing about it is I was ultimately doing an adventure movie at the end of the day, and it had to build to an exciting adventure at the end. And so it's the only time in my screenwriting career that I literally did have a master to serve eventually at the very end. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. I actually had the, the script of Pulp Fiction right next to me as I was writing. So I wouldn't get lost in like, okay, now it's it, you know 260 pages and I have to reduce it down from there. I wanted to know how I was doing page count wise so I could adjust it as I go. Like, you know, I'd get to page 66, and then I'd look at Pulp Fiction. Where was I on Pulp Fiction in page 66? And I, oh, well, you know, that's, 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 that's more or less correct. That's more or less right, dramatically, and, you know, what we know and what we don't know. That's kind of, that's more or less the same, same place, you know? So it's just kind of gauging it like that. Most of these people that talk about writing for screenplays, if they were teaching acting, they would be thrown out and ridiculed. Because at the end of the day, it, Again, coming from like a teaching acting aspect, which is how I learned to write. They all seem to me a very actor bad word. They all seem to be result oriented. And real actors aren't result oriented. But real writers aren't result oriented. I mean, the actor wants everything they do to be magnificent. And the writer wants everything they do to be magnificent. It's the doing of it, it's the process, it's the getting there, it's the journey. The journey is everything. The journey makes the destination worthwhile. And novelists trust that. Actors trust that. They trust that if they live the part and they are honest and they don't try to predetermine too much that the ultimate and result will be rewarding. And it seems like people who teach screenwriting go in the opposite direction. You don't have to know how to make a movie. If you truly love cinema with all your heart and with enough passion, you can't help but make a good movie. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to know a lens, you know, a 40 and a 50 and a all that shit. crossing the line. None of that is important. If you just truly love cinema with enough passion and you really love it, then you can't help but make a good movie. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you're an aspiring screenwriter, I have a YouTube channel just for you. So my friend Tyler Mowry has a YouTube channel where he talks about the fundamentals of screenwriting. He talks about things like story structure, uh, character developments and character arcs, and how to create conflict. Basically everything you need to know to begin writing your screenplay. I've been writing for a while now, but I've learned a lot from this resource, so I will have a link in the description down below for it. I definitely recommend it. As always, if you have any recommendations for videos for me to make from your favorite TV shows or movies, just comment it down below and I will read them and I'll add it to the list. I'll see you guys next week as we take another look behind the curtain.